Business Chief uh, P.J. Keating public hearing. Yes, sir. Welcome, Chief Gallagher. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Good Good evening. Evening. It's Leonard. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Uh, so here we are. Uh, from what I understand, uh, our goal tonight is to uh, come out of this meeting with a decision by the board uh, on a public hearing for the issuance of a land use license to P.J. Keating. Uh, as just a recap from the last time I stood here and briefed you, nothing has changed. Uh, the application to the Department of Fire Services, the Fire Marshal, to receive their authority to move uh, or to, to erect the, uh, the storage tanks for combustible liquids, two 20,000 gallon tanks and one 30,000 gallon tank is still pending at the Marshal's office. They've done a, a preliminary review. Uh, the box that they cannot check yet is the fact that the town hasn't issued the land use license. So they need that to be uh, acted on uh, with the uh, ultimate decision forwarded to them so that they can either continue or stop the process. Uh, so uh, as you know, PJ Keating is moving the asphalt plant to the front, the South Main Street side of the plant away from where it currently is operated, way out back. Uh, the silos that you see are for the storage of the actual asphalt itself, the solid. Uh, there's eight new tanks there and all the accessory equipment. The containment area has been built for the moving of these tanks. They are now uh, off their season for manufacturing of asphalt. They shut down in early December. So they are in the process of moving those tanks. We had a discussion about whether or not that's a uh, smart business decision for them. Uh, I'm assuming that they understand there's a modicum of risk to invest uh, time and energy in moving something that the Board of Selectmen may, may not give the necessary document for. Um, but that's for them to, uh, to assume that responsibility. So the, uh, the state law allows uh, the Board to hold a public hearing uh, with um, the public to discuss the use of that land for the purpose of storing certain combustible liquids over a certain amount. And the 70,000 gallons that are stored of liquid asphalt, not the solid, that's the, the end result, the liquid is what is licensed by the state, but first requires a uh, land use license from the board. So that's where we are. So the, the eight tanks that actually holds the physical asphalt after it's being done being combined with the three tanks, the diesel, the AC20, ACT, I yep. think I read on it, it's a binder. Yep. Um, and aggregate, sand, stone, the like. Mm -hmm. the, that's being stored in the three tanks, correct? No, that, the, the, the liquid, so think of it as baking a cake. Yep. Um, the, three, the three tanks are the fuels the three tanks are the the, you know, the eggs and the milk and the water, if you will. And off to the side, you have the, the, the powder and sugar and everything else. In the eight tanks? No. Off to the side, in bins. Okay. Those components, based upon the formula that they have a request for, because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm getting a crash course on asphalt production. Mm -hmm. It's not all the same. So uh, they, they're producing their ABC formula. There's a certain mixture. It goes into an oven, and then it gets shot up and put into those storage tanks, those silos, okay. from which trucks will drive under, as they currently do, the big trucks that you see going up and down South Main Street, they drive under the silos, certain amount is dropped in, and they drive off. Okay. So do we want to pick a date for that hearing, Chief? Yes. Yeah. We can accommodate. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I guess there's a. And I have more comments I want to, but let's get let's sure. get that on the calendar. Yep. I've got more comments I want to make, but why don't we why don't we try to get that on the calendar first? We just have a, a seven day notice period ahead of the hearing that you have to get the notice out. Any preference? It's your your meeting, gentlemen. Well, day of the week. A little further out to do a little more yeah. due diligence on um, maybe perhaps contacting town council and seeing what the board's absolute rights are and. Yeah. Wrong Town Council has offered to be there at the hearing. Yes. I think it's important legal expertise at this meeting. Tuesday the 28th? Um, not available. Okay. This is a difficult month on my end. 
<coughs> uh, we, uh, we're scheduled on March 4th anyway. I'd like to, I, you oh, know, I want we, we're talk, we're talking about right notice to the residents and what that what that looks like. I'd like to make sure we get That's notice correct, out yeah. to a big circle and let. So mm -hmm. I'd like to allow a little. I don't feel any urgency to get this done quickly. So you're talking February. Let's go on to February. Uh, I think we're in February. I think yeah. we're in February. Um, uh, um, the 11th. The 11th. Feb 11. That works on my end. It's Feb 11. Thursday night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The time. Six. Why don't we do it at six? Just to allow people six. time to get home and. 6 p.m. and we also have to determine where we're going to hold this public yes. hearing because the chief's uh, YouTube video has had over 1,200 hits on it explaining the situation at PJ Keating. So can we anticipate a rather large crowd or, is, so or should, should we, we anticipate? Council on Aging? I think Council on Aging is probably... Council chief Gallagher, how many, how many um, individuals can we hold in the Council on Aging without breaching the fire in uh, excess of 80. <coughs> 80, that's it? 80. We'd had past uh, PJ Keating meetings were in that building. I don't know how many people we had, but it, it worked well for that. I and mean, we could go to the schools as well. But, um, how about if we establish it, set it for the Council on Aging? We'll keep our ear to the street. If we're hearing a lot of uh, chatter, then you know, we can move to the schools if necessary. Mm -hmm. We just have to make sure there's no basketball right now. It's like basketball and whatever the schools, sports things are going on. So, so February 11th, 6 o'clock at uh, Council on Aging at this point. Town Council, we can try. Let's run out the Town yeah. Council. We want Pretty Town sure Council. sure that date's good with Town Council. So, yeah. Yeah. so, so Ms. Want, you know, the, Chairman. Chairman, the confusion, I think, um, or my confusion at this point remains what. Um, and uh, Ms. Hebert and I were having a discussion prior. I mean, what, what are we pretending we've got authority over this thing? And it, it um, you know, I don't want to, it feels like we've got to jump through hoops, we've got to have a hearing, we've got to listen right. to all the neighbors say, we hate it here, we don't like the idea, we don't want it, why is it going there? Well, and then it just, it complied with the regulations and we got to put it there anyway. So yeah. if, if, if are we wasting our time by having this public heat? My opinion, I, I, I never want to sign anything that moves that plant in front of that property. In my opinion, if, if you're asking me to sign something, I don't know why I ever would. Just just using common sense, but common sense and the law sometimes don't, uh, right. often conflict. So uh, we are veterans of processes similar to this, where there's regulatory approval beyond the town, either the state or the federal government, as we ran into with the LNG facility. Uh, that kind of uh, stacks the deck uh, in the favor of the petitioner as long as uh, all the required necessities are complied with. Um, yeah. However, and, and I'm glad Mr. Creer is here from the Board of Health, um, I think it's important and I think it's uh, expected of the townspeople that we be uh, um, straight with them. And by that, I mean the, the question that you're being asked is to issue a license for PJ Keating to host combustible liquids over a certain quantity. In 1995, the town gave them permission. They gave them a license for that use. There's been no violation of that license. There's been no uh, code violations when it comes to the storage of those components. Uh, the difference is you are now looking at this anew because they want to move it. Mm. Uh, legal minds would have to opine as to whether or not uh, when someone has been in compliance for the last, since 1995, uh, and was given the approval originally, uh, if there is justification for denying that license, for denying the, the land use license at this time. Um, there is, so, so I, I think we really kind of need to set the table here as to what the expectations are. Uh, and legal counsel will come back, I believe, um, because they've done so in informal memos to us uh, and said that there is a process and the fire marshal is looking at that process. Uh, um, there is appeals to the licensing process. 
which is all very uh, regulated. So, um, you know, we, we are to a certain extent, Mr. Chairman, uh, in a in a box when it comes to the issuance of the license. Having said that, there are conditions. The Board of Selectmen, as a licensing authority, can put any condition that they want, from my understanding uh, of communications that Ms. Hebert has shared from Town Council on the license. And as a member of the Soil Board, you know that we've gone to great lengths to put into the permit certain requirements. Mm -hmm. So the permit that PJ Keating needs to operate their entire facility, not just the asphalt plant, but the entire facility, quarry and the, the asphalt plant, has a punch list of things that they're saying that they're going to abide by. And those are, Joe, help me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but there's state uh, laws, state laws the state there's laws. regulations yeah. for uh, air emissions, and yeah, it's, it's the a federal, comprehensive. Federal laws, the wetland laws, <coughs> the state laws, the local bylaws, it's everything, and then a little extra. Right. So we're of the belief that you could also add, so you, you, you've got the, the teeth in the permit, the question has always been, or the missing piece of this has been enforcement. And that's why we're excited by the town moving towards a part-time health agent who is really going to be the boots on the ground at PJ Keating uh, on a very regular basis, making sure that that list of five or six items that they've agreed to when they submitted the permit is enforced mm -hmm. and is being complied with. We've never had that before. You know, Mr. Career is, uh, is a, a one-man show when it comes to uh, doing the site inspections and the enforcement. Uh, and this will allow someone to put in 20 plus hours a week? No more than 20. 20 hours a week. Yeah. You know, if it is so uh, decided, they're at that facility, making sure that all those boxes are crossed, uh, are checked. We also have, and we discussed this at the last meeting, and we're, we're developing this for your consideration in the near future, uh, the development of a nuisance abatement plan. We need to be prepared for when they turn that switch on. If they're given the permission by this board and by the state, when they flip the switch to start making asphalt close to South Main Street, one would anticipate that there's going to be complaints. And we've discussed as a group having that infrastructure put together to handle those complaints not only to acknowledge them, but to seek some resolution for those. So as we build that plan, and we have to do it cooperatively with, with PJ Keats, kind of building the framework internally, then we'll work with them to, to see how reasonable we can be as far as resolving those concerns. Compliance with that document, the nuisance abatement plan, would be incorporated both in the permit, and I would argue also in the land use license. So now we've, now we've kind of locked them in twice mm. to agreeing to address concerns that the citizens will have when light comes in, or noise comes in, or, or odor, or dust. Uh, so you would have them as, as much as, as much influence as you have issuing the license, that could always, it, uh, not issuing the license, that could always be legally challenged, and it, we kind of lose control of that when it leaves this building. But we can construct the license to kind of hold their feet to the fire to make sure that not only are they abiding by that list of items they agreed to in the permit, but we're adding on top of that uh, a nuisance plan that they've, they've been told to agree to because it's contingent upon you issuing the license, uh, that we work fairly with them to develop. Uh, and one that should be able to uh, to address the concerns of the citizens. So, so I mean, in many ways, this process might just be symbolic. At the end of the day, we're going to be required to sign off on this license, but we're not going to be able to say no. But we can say yes, but, and the but is conditions under which we're going to give it to you, but these are the things that you need to do to to, in order to keep the license. So the soil board develops the permit, yep. board of selectmen approves the permit. If you incorporate into that permit that checklist and a statement by which they're going to uh, comply with the nuisance abatement plan and they fail to do that, next year when that permit comes to you, you have the authority to approve and not approve. 
That's annual renewal for what? The soil board permit or the, the, the soil, soil board? The soil board permit's permit. an annual. It's annual. But this the, is a one time though. No. No, land use license is one time. Is one, that's one Until time. The soil board's annual. Is annual. Yes. yes. Yeah, the soil board permit, I was involved in the process of member of the soil board and that that permit's got teeth like it never had before. Correct. And Mr. Career spent a, spent a lot of time with, um, with our current. engineers, consulting engineers putting all the appropriate references in the law to making to, to give us some teeth to make sure they're complying. Correct. And, you know, I think we need monitoring now. But um, I, I think it's good to have a public hearing. I think it's good to bring the residents in to talk about life around the quarry and, mm -hmm. and the things that uh, maybe P.J. Keating needs to address um, going forward, especially with the asphalt plant on the street now, which is not a good idea. And an understanding that when they leave that hearing, and if the board were to issue that license, that's not the last time they see you, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. They will see you again next year when they come before you for, um, is it, the board of selectmen that issues the Yeah, so the we, permit. the board, the way that the soil board is set up, the soil board itself reviews and approves their application for their, for their permit. The board of selectmen actually sign the license to operate for the year. Mm -hmm. But the soil board, so that's the two parts. So you got the soil board in it, and you have the board of selectmen in it. So that's how that works. We approve the application, send it over to the board of selectmen. The board of selectmen then choose to, um, to uh, issue it or not, yeah. because you ultimately are the ones to sign it. We reviewed the application. Yeah. So as Joe, Mr. Correa is alluding to, is the soil board goes through their processes. They, they look at the fees and things associated with it. Yeah. And then it comes in front of the board. We review the application again from the soil board after their approval. And if we want to make changes, we can kick it back to the soil board, yep. have them go through the process of other change recommendations. The sitting board sitting in both seats, I've merged that all it into comes, one. It into comes, one. Yeah, it comes okay. back. But <coughs> so, excuse me. Mr. Roche, got a stronghold, if you want to call it a stronghold is more in the permit than in the land use license in the sense that we can put restrictions in the permit but in the land use license if they're in compliance with state and federal guidelines uh, for the issuance of the permit for the issue yes okay but you can include in the permit that they must abide by the nuisance abatement plan and in my my non-loyally recommendation was instead of pinning that just to the permit pin it also to the license and if council comes back and says well you know it shouldn't be on the license well we still got it on the permit or the other way around correct so you know mm -hmm. best case scenario you've got it documented two places and them agreeing to it in two places well i'm sorry not even agreeing being told that they have to mm -hmm. comply in two places uh, worst case scenario one but they can't get they can't work without both correct so, I don't know yet, but I've, I've been doing some research on it. I, I'm not so sure by the change of the land use license that we don't have a say in that. So, they're operating the, those tanks way out back right now that right. have the petrochemicals, I'll call it, mm -hmm. instead of milk and flour. Mm -hmm. So, the petrochemicals um, in the back part of that property, by them moving that to the front, it's a change of use. Right. Um, which I believe that this board should have some authority over that change of use, just as the ZBA would if you were going for a change of use for a business um, license, right? And you were changing the use of that, you'd have to go back in front of the ZBA. So I I'm not so sure that this board doesn't have any jurisdiction over over where where it goes on over, there. Over it even moving. Over it moving. You know, I yeah. think that it, I, I don't know this for sure, so yeah. I don't want to say for sure. But I just I, reminded Mr. Gasper that unfortunately, on industrial properties, we gave up the site mm -hmm. approval process. Mm -hmm. So you know, um, they can move. The I'm not sure if that regulation, you know, it, 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 if that authority is there, it, it could be. But mm -hmm. what we used to hang our hat on, which was this, the uh, site plan review that's been taken away from us once it was reclassified as an industrial property. They would have had to come to the town with their plans and the town would have had to approve it. Right. Yeah, I understand. I'd rather but not go not back in time and, and talk about me right. disagreeing with Understood. that article. Understood. And I was the only one <laughs> doing it. So um, I sit here, I guess, pretty angry that I'm sitting here in this position right now knowing that 
these folks, the residents surrounding that property, are going to have a bigger problem. So I'll look at it as best as I can, do my research as best as I can, run right. things, different ideas by town council because I would definitely want a legal opinion because I wouldn't want to make recommendations to the board arbitrarily mm -hmm. um, for it to have no sticking point. But I think that if they're going to move that facility, I'm with Mr. Cabral, they're going to move that facility, they're going to be good neighbors, a lot better neighbors than what they have been. I'll leave it at that. Nothing else, Mr. Roche? I'm all set, thank you. Right, and I know there are some residents here. Um, I would, you know, collect your thoughts. February 11th is the time PJ Keating will be in, will be there. Uh, Board of Health will be there, other departments in town. Did you have anything you want to say? I am just wondering, what is their purpose of moving it up front rather than leaving it? They've had place? a hard time. It's like there's no, I mean. They're, they're, they're looking to take the, the, the rock. It's they're, they're they need more area to more. blast. It's in the way. But, <laughs> the asphalt plant where it is right now is in the way of, is in the way of, of the making a bigger quarry yeah. on the ground. I mean, if, if I don't know if anybody passes by that location, say at around four o'clock, sometimes five o'clock, you're in a haze. How much mm -hmm. more of a haze is it going to be when you? And I mean, we live on Dalton Street. You open up your windows, you've Full got all dust. that fine dust in your windowsills. Well, I mean, it's it doesn't matter how hard you try to keep your house clean. So not only is it that but I mean you come through it I, I can't imagine living right across the street never mind we we're a few blocks away I mean it makes me feel like let's put the house on the market before people realize exactly what's going on I mean yes you said the license was approved if I'm using the right for, for the location that it's at that and we've had no problem well you I don't know if you said no problems but whatever it, it well with the, with the tanks Tanks. Exactly. That's, what, exploded, that's yes. what the discussion is limited to. Those storage tanks. Yes. Yes. We've had no problem with those. Have we had problems with dust? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But the dust tanks, cracks. Whatever. But the tanks where they're located doesn't affect. The, I don't think if the immediate neighbors. But being up front where they're planning on moving it, I just I think <laughs> I think we're I just, a lot of. I've just been reminded you should identify yourselves. Yeah. I'm speak. sorry. I was going to try to get yeah. that head reader. You will find it. Reader and Raymond Bear would be. And what street do you live on? Uh, uh, Dalton Street. Our oh, neighbors, sorry. Yes, yeah. right across. And Laura and Bill Perry at 36 Dalton Street. Okay. So uh, February 11th is uh, bring your neighbors. I mean, it's the time we're going to be collecting comments from neighbors up the quarry. And that would be the time to come and, and a lot of people don't express your concerns. It. Say that again? A lot of people don't even get, yeah. we never got a letter about it. So well, there, been, there were at least two hearings in the past. So we're going to. Well, this yeah, was, we, you know, so, Well, tonight was just a. Basically, a talk and discussion to decide when you're going to have the meeting. Right. 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 As part of the notice, um, the applicant will have to send out letters to every resident within a certain area. How big a circle do we want to draw? Um, let me just see. It's on here. Uh, at least a half a mile. We're I around think. Century House, is where Dalton Street is. Yeah. So you're right. Um, they may be required to only send it out to within 300 feet. Yeah, yeah we want to go bigger. And we, the board, have discussed this in the past, saying that we want to have a mm -hmm. much bigger outreach to our Chief, residents. Any, any sense as to how big that yeah. circle should be? So we talked we can, about we can use the lot. code red reverse 911 system. Make it as big as you want, Mr. Chairman. Can we do that? Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So, so legally, the letters will go to um, all owners of real estate abutting on said land or directly opposite said land. So that's not big enough. That's no. not we need we need yeah. half a mile anyway. Mm -hmm. But like Chief said, we can use reverse 911. Yeah, let's do that. Let's plan. Let's plan. Can you post this too. meeting, please, on the on like you did on your on your website? Sure. Maybe we can post it on the town's <laughs> website as well, so it's in two places. I know that you've uh, done a great job. You've drawn a lot of attention to the fire department's website, the VFV, the PJ Keating sure. discussion. So I think that those followers will be yep. looking at it and seeing the updates. Right. And it's basically 30 days, a little better than 30 days away. So. Right. I think it's ample opportunity. Unfortunately, we may have some snowbirds that are taken off. There are. We already have yeah, some. Yeah, we already yeah. have some. On the next street. Open. We're usually yeah. not here, actually. <laughs> we'll hear the majority. I think it's important for you folks to understand that the board is going to listen to the majority. Um, I think that your concerns will be shared as a majority, right? I mean, I don't mm -hmm. think anybody's going to come to the table and give you anything different than what different. 50 residents are going to do the hundred that are surrounding there let's just call it a hundred i don't think that anything different is going to change in that discussion i think the board's already very well aware of the nuisances and things of that nature um and again mr career our, our board of health agent chief gallagher mr cabral of the soil board 
Um, Miss Hebert, we've, you know, the town's been doing its job now, trying to lock its teeth into this thing. So I think that, you know, we're in pretty good hands right now. And, I, you know, hopefully we'll be able to make them comply and be a better neighbor because I can tell you right now, I don't live over there. I live by White's Farm Dairy, but I travel. <laughs> we can send them to, we can send them to some dust. I travel, I travel down Main Street quite often, my friend, and I'm disgusted with the road conditions over there, the dust on the place. I'm talking about a road, they're, they're making a road up Pembroke, and is that gonna be for the trucks to go in and out of also? No, no. So we would we had talked a while back about trying to make a uh, an exit off of I think it was 240 chief or 240, but there's some complications with that because it would involve the feds and things of that nature for state highways and regulations there. So I you know that that was something that we had looked at and talked about a little bit, but it seems to be a dead end on that to try to deter those trucks and get them off of Main Street altogether. With so. You know, it would, I guess, you know, I know I'm going to do my homework on seeing what can be done, what other places that have quarries um, in New England, what kind of things that they've done, the ideas that they've had and implemented. Um, that's part of our job, and, you know, we're going to hopefully bring that to the table and bring that to town council and say, hey, can we do this? We, I've seen it in, you know, Greenwich, Connecticut, just say, um, maybe I find some things, Mr. DeRoche might find some things, Mr. Cabral, so we'll, we'll, we'll put it in a package, give it to town council and see what we can and can't do. And, you know, I think at that meeting, Mr. Chairman, we'll be able to let you folks know that, as Mr. Cabral has said, are our hands really tied on this thing and is there much we can do? Um, I think that, you know, P.J. Key needs to step up to the plate and try to be a better neighbor, so. Excuse me. Are there really any time yeah. ordinance that they can operate yeah, on? Yeah, we've talked about that. Yeah, right now they go all night long. We've talked about yeah. that. Is there I mean, a time ordinance now? No. No. Well, we've, we've got the ability in our bylaw to put time, res time restrictions. Um, we've, the other thing we've talked about is how many, how many vehicles can go in, out, in and out of there, even if they're open all night long. Is it unlimited vehicles all night long? I mean, you know, the state wants to do their road work at night, and the residents of the town of Akushnet pay the price for that. Because the trucks are in and out all night long, and how many trucks? Is it five, is it 10, is it 150? Who can and tell, it's so loud. Who can tell? <laughs> so, I mean, that's the kind of thing that maybe we can put restrictions on that, you know, all right, if you're going all night long, that's fine, but it's no more than this number of vehicles. Per hour or something to that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, I don't it, it's, a, it's a bad spot to be in for any of you folks that have bought that property because it, to me, if it was me living there, um, it wouldn't matter if I have five tailgates slamming in that, in that uh, I don't call it industrial park in, in PJ Keene's land area. If you're sleeping at one o'clock and you hear these gates slamming and these truck bodies dropping and everything else, I know all about these vehicles and I know they're very loud in nature. It doesn't matter to me whether I got five of them. If I wake up one or two times during the middle of the night, well, it's quieter in the summertime when the trees have leaves. When the trees don't have no leaves, it's even worse. Mm -hmm. Oh, the door windows are closed as well. When the windows are open, you, you actually hear more. Not sure. All right. So, Feb so let's try February 11th. Get all your neighbors there, and let's so we can, you know right. we'll, we'll go all night and let them yeah. let them hear what our concerns are as, as neighbors. If we go all night. You're gonna break sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> that would pizza would be. <laughs> but Mr. Mr. Chairman, pizza. if I may just if I may step out of my lane just for a moment, I, the the. You folks have been on Dalton Street for a while. Yeah. And I, I know you've called and you've registered concerns in the past. And you may feel like they haven't gone anywhere. They have. You know, we, we, we have attempted to do the best that we can within the restrictions that we're given. The game changer is going to be that part-time health agent. And paid for by you, accountable to you, working there 20 hours a week for the town, making sure that the dust isn't moving beyond their, their boundaries and that the noise is being adhered, uh, 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 noise restrictions being adhered to and light infiltration and things of that sort. We've never had that before. But so who's been monitoring it? You, you know, you no said point. they've been a good neighbor, but really who well, they say Well, they say they've been a good neighbor. Now so when you hear I have tracks in my, in my foundation. So short of Mr. Career and his predecessors as the health agents, in addition to doing all this Title V and the septic and the restaurant inspections and the, that whole plate of responsibilities that his department has, it would be that person. This is going to be, in my opinion, having been around for a while, this is going to be a game changer. And it's one that um, I, 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 I'm proud that this board and the health board and Mr. Career have really kind of taken the lead to 
make sure that this happens because we've never had that before and it's long overdue. So what you're saying is all our complaints that we put in and basically got no. brushed under no, the... They no, they looked no, no, no. at it. We, we, we've had, you know, similar to, again, I don't mean to be up time, but when I get phone calls about blasting, you know, we take those seriously and we investigate and they were within their limits. So you, you, you can't punish them if they're doing, if they're staying within their limits. Just it's frustrating for you. It's equally frustrating for us because, you know, we're, we're on the receiving end of those calls. This is going to be a little different. The, the game's changing a little bit, a lot towards the town's favor. Uh, and stick with us. I think you. I think we're going to be able to work this out. I just, I just find it hard to believe that if we haven't been satisfied up to this point, then we're going to allow them to go further with what they want to do, bring it closer to the street, and then we're still going to be unsatisfied. Yeah, just a couple. I just want to conclude and move on, but yep. just a couple of things. So, um, now what I, what I do want to address that though. So, if we can find, Mr. Gasper's asking the existing land use permit, if we can find a yep. copy of that, that's going to be somewhere. Yep. And just, I mean, just to your point, um, PJ Keating's getting attention in the last two years like they've never gotten before. Right. I mean, the uh, the chief, I mean, you know, monitoring the the uh, monitoring the blasting, we re monitoring the, the seismic blasting. profile of the blasting. Um, the soil board's been been uh, soil board regulations have been stepped up. Um, we've brought in consulting engineers. Nothing happens quickly in government, but you know we've talked with PJ Keating. You know, met with the PJ Keating and the DEP in their Lakeville offices, talking about issues like this. Um, the soil permit has language in it like it never had before. So PJ Keating knows we're not happy. Um, their annual permit, which is renewed on an annual basis, as annual permits are, has language in it it never had before. So it's happening slowly, but it's happening. And PJ Keating knows that the town of Kushnet is watching and, and is trying to be a ne better neighbor. I'm not sure that how successful they're being in that effort, but they want to hear complaints. They've established a complaint, a uh, 1-800 number or a there's a telephone number for complaints. Um, they're trying. They're responding. They're shutting down the plant when when wind levels are high, when when dust is in the air. They're trying to be a better neighbor, but you know the the facility is what it is, and I think there's only so much that they can do. But um, you know we, we're trying, and and right. this is further evidence of that. But February 11th, come tell P.J. Keating what you think. Tell P.J. Keating what the problems there are, and. Um, Hopefully we can make it better. So, thank you. February 11th. Tell all your friends, thank all your you. neighbors. Okay. Let's, fill, yeah. okay. let's fill a room because when you do that, they're going to take it seriously. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And don't and don't be afraid. Please don't. If, if you can get the word around, <coughs> I know some people are intimidated about coming in front of the board of selectmen and speaking. This is not the time for that to happen. Mm -hmm. I think that this board, I know myself, we want to hear you complain. We want to know what the actual complaints are. So that maybe that night, if there's something that we haven't heard, we'll add that to the land use permit. Yeah. Is exactly. that fair to say, yeah. Chief? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.